I have a lot of questions about that. <laughs> and I suppose you do too. I've been watching in the chat where you guys have been posting. And I have uh, people, I posted that on uh, Telegram last night and people were responding to it as well and going, what in the world is happening here? Hey folks, Robert Imbriali here. Thank you for joining us at SBG News and Views. And without further ado, let me bring in my amazing co-host, Lister Lewis Herms. Lewis, how you doing, my friend? Howdy, howdy, Robert. I love to see you. You're looking good. Good to see you, brother. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Just chilling. Ah, there's a lot to unpack in that, that video. <laughs> it's just... Oh, Lord. I was I just started to take notes. It's the I first know. time I saw the video. And I was just like, wow, we got this, we got this, we got this, we got that. Check, 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 check. So first of all, first question is, real Trump, fake Trump? What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I won't answer. I won't answer that. Okay. Let's put that in the <laughs> that chat. That one gets me in too much trouble. Let's put that to um, the chat. What do you guys think? Was that the real Trump or was that what we call Fump? <laughs> the fake Trump. <laughs> yeah, that's uh it's interesting. Um so what do you have to unpack and see if I can add on to your synopsis? Well, there was here? there was a lot of uh chatter about the photo behind him with the military. And he and Melania, uh, that looked like maybe the igno- the inauguration, um, if I'm not mistaken. That was an older older photo of that. So what's the what's the messaging there? The messaging is you're thinking about okay, he's going to be inaugurated again. He's going to be president again, right? That's the that's kind of the the framing that they're giving you, the subliminal framing, if you will, right? And- uh, I I would agree with you actually. It's. That's what which seems like that's what mostly we get now is that this subliminal messaging. Right. Right. Um, it's it's weird. And I breathe I breathe heavy because this is why I, I go with the gray hat theory instead of all white hats, because yep. they're no matter if I, I support them or not, they're, they're just not doing things the way I would do. I mean, I, I, I personally am, would rather be upfront and authentic and I don't want to play games with people. Um, but you know, if, like I, like when, when it comes down to it, some of the games we'll find out were, were necessary, I'm, I'm sure. And then maybe we'll find out that I'm right. And some of them are kind of over the top. And if we're going to be honest and authentic, some of them in the Patriot community, we'd look too far into it and there's really nothing there, but we see something that doesn't exist. Right. I see Which that a lot. I think that that's the lot. most, yeah. Yeah. I think that's the most <laughs> dangerous thing because, um, ultimately, this is what the the baddies are looking for. They're looking for us to make to trip up so they can use it against us. And I guarantee you they're compiling all that evidence. So when the when the hammer really comes down and there's proof, they'll be like, well, you can't believe this guy or this person or this person because they said this and this and this and they were all lies. Right. Right. So we have to be. That's why you don't see me jump on a lot of these narratives too quickly in Telegram and on the news because I'm cognizant of what the uh, bigger picture is. And we have one that we're going to share today that a lot of truthers jumped on yesterday like crazy. And the moment I saw it, I go, hmm, something's off here. And sure enough, I found out it was completely false. So we're going to we're talk about that today. But yeah, you could jump onto these things because everyone's doing it. So it must be the right thing. It's, and, probably, and, the one I, it's probably the one I shared. Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, that's that's sort of the second part of the show, so we'll get to that. What else did you see in this video? I mean, you know, the, the, aside from the fact that will there be a November election? Will there not be a November election? You know, he's lining up as if it's happening, right? Yeah, what, the, the good news is I, I, I read something that he said that one of the first things he's going to do is release all the J6ers. Right. But what saddened me is that should have been in that speech. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the highest priorities that we should absolutely have. Yeah, it should. So that that should definitely be in the speech, and and it wasn't. So um, that that was interesting. Um, when he talked about how this was a record win and so on and so forth, and he trounced the candidates, there's actually a lot to being said there because whether 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 we want to believe it or not, if you if you look through history, the other Republican candidates, this was a a better field, not, and I don't agree with any of them, but this is a better field than they've really put in in decades. It was a pretty solid field of, of people that were articulate, people that had some accomplishments, 
did did hold some de- decent offices and so on and so forth. So it was not a bad field. So the fact that he did so well is amazing. And all of them at one time, I know they've regressed, but all of them at one time supported President Trump. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's very, very interesting. And that shows you that the country not only believes that President Trump's the guy, they believe that he got hosed in the election. And that's good. That's the underlying message to me. Yeah, well, you know, we're seeing so much now coming up about the election. Like, I, I think one song, 2020, it ain't over yet. It's very true because there's still, yeah. I, I can't believe it. We're almost four years out now. And there's still stuff being coming out, more and more coming out, coming out. And you think by now we would have it all. But no, there's more and more coming up all the time. So more and more people's minds are being changed and, and you know, the numbers are showing in the polls uh, that people aren't buying the narrative that was uh, thrown at us back then. And people are right. waking up to it and they're going, well, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense now. You know? I agree. Yeah. So let's go from the 3D world to the 5D world mm-hmm. in, in his speech. So, and I, I really don't like the analogy, but everybody's has grasped the 3D, 5D thing. So right. that, that's great. Let's use it. So in the 3D world, it looks like people are trying to do something about it. When you look at his speech right there from the so-called 5D perspective, I thought it was very interesting the way he touched on energy being less expensive than you could ever imagine. Yep. Well, so are they going to bring out that? Yeah, Yeah, new technologies maybe. And that we'll be pulling it from the ether. Are we talking magnets? What you know? What type of free energy are we talking about? Something like that is where I got. And here, here's the one where I know I'm going to go into left field. But if if you talk to some some of these people and they talk a lot about ley lines, and they say that there's more gold hidden in in the in the earth in ley lines than anywhere else and ley lines i'm gold is part of the resonance and the right. frequencies mm-hmm. yep. right <laughs> and what did he keep what he said again and again he says there's liquid gold we have liquid gold in the earth he didn't so say that black it. gold now black gold is oil but he said liquid gold. exactly yeah. he said mm-hmm. liquid gold yep. which if the people are right that could be ley lines. So I'm fine. I'm trying to look from the 3D and the 5D perspective, to be fair. And uh, I know put my tinfoil hat on, but I thought that very interesting that what he said about energy and what he said about liquid gold. I think there's something there. Uh, I was thinking back to plasma televisions. Do you remember that technology? Oh, yeah. I remember them because uh, the reason why they sucked is because the image would get burned on the screen if you if you left it on too much. Correct. You could touch a plasma screen and you can see it, it changed and it took a while to come back mm-hmm. too. And they would yep. have ghosts, yep. ghost images on there. So I ask about that technology, right? Because it may have been, we have it, it may have been just too early to bring it out. It may not have been refined and perfected. But what, what it did gave you a very high resolution uh, image, which you could not create with CRT screens, the old screens that we had with the, the tube and the cathode ray tube, right? You couldn't create those images. So plasma did that. And we eventually figured out LEDs and now we've got higher resolution with LEDs. But I'm wondering about that technology because it doesn't go away, right? And, and you ask the question, it's like, well, you know, more energy, cheaper energy. Well, what would be cheaper than plasma, right? Now, there's a story that Germany is investing in hydrogen-powered power plants. And the reason that they're doing that, cheap energy, they're going to be able to export uh, energy for pennies. Unlimited supply, all you need is water and a little bit of electricity to uh, break the hydrogen out of the water. And you've got all this energy. So, you know, the, the cracks are there that we could be moving in this direction where we could have like abundant, uh, you know, very, very low cost energy because we're struggling right now. Look in California, you know, if you have a hot day, they tell you to turn off your air conditioner at the hottest part of the day. I'm like, what now? Well, yeah. okay. <laughs> if anybody understands California and the, the drought scam, it's just, a, it's just a scam. Right. They, di- <clears throat> they divert water, they control the water. It's all, it's all a control mechanism. Right. If you really look into it for sure. Um, so it, it's interesting. So, uh, 
I'll go into the plasma, but let me step back where you were, because this is an interesting conversation about energy. Here's what we know. <clears throat> we know for pennies, pennies on the gallon, right? We can create um, fresh water out of, from desalinization plants, Correct. which actually turn salt water into potable water, right? We, we already know that, and it's healthy water. By the way, salt water after it's desalinized still retains more of the essential essential trace elements and mineral Correct. than most waters do unless they come from a spring. Right. So it's very important to know. Number two, the technology is already out there for for a very small area like four by four or five by five in feet. If you guys are someplace else, that would be one point one two five meters. Um, anyways, we un how did you we do that math that quickly? Gee, I know. <laughs> My, believe me, I'm going to be math checked here in a second uh, okay. on the chat. It'll come up. Um, but anyways, it's important to know that we already have the technology to create hydrogen from water and that's why i'm right on right on site in such a small small not only right slip. on site but right in the car you could fill right. the car well, up I'm with talking, water i'm talking about how yeah. i'm talking about a house now right mm -hmm. i'm talking about powering houses so when you have that beautiful water coming in now from a desalinization plant virtually and i believe what it is it's 75 to 80 percent of the population is near the coast anyways yep so that kind of takes care of that. When you have that water coming in from a desalination, desalination plant and then goes into your, your, your beast, your little beast that creates the hydrogen, you've just now powered your house. Yep. And you've powered your car because you'll fill up at home instead of going some. Or, like you say, you would have the power plant with inside the car. Yeah. Which is already at least three people that have worked with this technology. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and it's very, I actually, I actually, um, in what movie was it? Oh, it was uh, our Watch the Water film on Deuterium. I actually showcased a beautiful vehicle that purely ran on water. And it ran fast and clean, and it was a sports car. So I show, and the reason why I showcased it on there, because I knew that it would be lost on the internet because it was an actual commercial for it. Wow. And it's it's beautiful. You guys should check it out if you ever want to. It's it's Watch the Water, um, the original Watch the Water, not the one that came out with the Venom stuff. And where Mine will you out. find this, uh, Senior Lewis? Uh, somewhere on Rumble. <laughs> uh, yeah. So just go to uh, screwbigdove.com and click on Films, and uh, it, you'll find it there. And then you can just type in Watch the Water, and it'll come right up. Films is the one with that uh, movie projector. If you guys don't know yes. what that is, it's a movie projector from years gone by. <laughs> from years gone by. Oh, can I go ahead, go through the screw of and I want to touch on something plasma, which people like to get so-called inside information. Yeah, just uh, screw of is where you want to go. If you haven't gone, uh, Lewis is working with Lisa to keep the site up to date. And uh, remember your oath.com. There's a link there. Freedom in action dot uh, net is where you will find what to do in your local communities. Uh, and then uh, you have the swag button, which you, if you want to you know, dress up with the, the swag that we've got, uh, are we going to be adding new swag this spring? I think there's a new spring collection coming out, if I'm not correct. Yes, yep. there is a spring collection. Okay. And I need to spring into action to get that going. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, we want the uh, the screw big of bikini is what we're looking for. We're going to have to yes, get that yes. done. Okay. Yes. Uh, and songs, the other thongs for men. Thongs for, sure. for men. There you go. And a bunch then... of Borats running around. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other button there is a social media. It's hard to find Lewis's sites on social, but right there, that social media button will take you directly to those websites. And uh, we also have uh, Renegade Media on Telegram. That is where we post the videos that we use here, plus a bunch of other stuff that we're finding uh, as we find it, literally. So sometimes you're going to find stories there before we actually do the show. Uh, so you want to keep on uh, top of that uh, on, on Telegram, go to Renegade Media. And if you want to email me, robert at renegademedia.tv. Now, let's get back to plasma and hydrogen because that's a cool conversation. So the... I had a conversation with somebody, and I, I cannot go into too much detail. I can I can tell you he worked for, he he was I, I hate to say it, but I'm not going to. That's all right. If they torture me, I'll never say anything. Anyway. So <laughs> he he worked for the armed forces, and he was active duty. And he actively was telling about the work that the good guys were doing, um, 
in tunnels underneath Hollywood. Wow. And he actually talked about now, by the way, when I say talked about, here's here's the way it works to keep him out of trouble. I asked questions, I would get a nod, yes or no, or a signal of some sort, right? And then we would continue, we'd have we'd have a good conversation, and then I would ask specific questions, and this is how I had to do it. Um, and he was actually, um, he was in a very comfortable place that I was at at the time. Good guy, and I know he's doing good work. He's uh, does phenomenal work, and he, he's in a very dangerous special forces type position more of a logistics, but he's on the ground in the heat, of, in the heat of the battles and under the tunnels. But we talked about a couple of things and then we're talking about weaponry. And he has indicated that we absolutely have plasma weapons that are extraordinarily effective. And he says, and are not doing damage to the the bad the good guys they're only doing damage to the bad guys and he 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 says it's it's an incredible weapon because the way it's set up it kind of avoids friendly fire um it can it can take out a corridor or a hallway of of bad guys and i said bad guys you know what are we talking about and he wouldn't go into what a bad guy was but he said somebody who wasn't wearing blue no, <laughs> that's lazy. Yeah, but that's I, mean, I mean, I don't honestly at this point, I don't know if we're, if we're talking about, you know, a, aliens, rep, reptilians. Uh-huh. I know these are cr- crazy, you know, or or demons. I don't know what we're talking about. I Demons, because I think there's a lot of that. And I believe in the truther community, it seems like there's a lot of demonic possession, too. Right. And I think we're we're working on clearing that out right now. S- some people may have picked up on some clues on the projects I'm working on. In regards to that, but that being said, I thought the plasma weapon thing was was very intriguing at the time. But I didn't put much into it, right? Until the more I learned and the more I heard, and so on and so forth. And the reason why I really never talked about this publicly, because again, if I don't get second corroboration, I generally don't roll with the story. Uh, you're um, like but, I'm the same way. You know, we gotta have yeah, it from it, at least two sources, right? Then so. there's just no way I could corroborate that because nobody was going to listen, actually answer my questions except him. So he's very credible, though, and he was active duty um, at the time. So I thought that's – I'll give that little information out. And sometimes I take years to say something like that because I don't want to get somebody in trouble either. Right. Yeah, there's more out there than uh, we're aware of. It, and, you know, everyone's – you know, <laughs> let's be prepared. For whatever happens. Yep. All right. A couple of big stories uh, that are worth talking about today. The first one was breaking in Georgia. Georgia judge dismisses several charges uh, against Trump. And uh, it looks like the Fannie Willis case is going down in flames because it looks like (laughs) there's going to be a judgment on her coming up next week. Right? Yeah. So once she gets... uh, No extra charge for the animation there, folks. Oh, yeah. Maybe extra, right? <laughs> <laughs> so Fulton County Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee quashed six counts of the indictment, including three directly implicating Trump. Uh, the AP reported uh, Judge McAfee's orders specified that the charges dismissed were linked to the alleged solicitation of elected officials to breach their oaths of office. Remember your oath. You can't breach it. Uh, So meanwhile, in the coming weeks, we'll hear the decision uh, of Judge McAfee on whether to disqualify Soros back Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis for having an improper relationship with Nathan Wade. So the same judge is is on both of these, both sides of this. So we had a little bit of a win today. Yeah, I I think it's a big win. I think, um, interesting enough, his name's McAfee. McAfee. I think is, is, is very interesting. If anybody's been following the Patriot Movement for a couple of years, they'll, they'll know where I'm going with that. Yep. But in there, I believe you read, this includes two charges to the controversial phone call on January 2nd. Correct. Yep. And um, so... It's not controversial anymore. Now it was, it was deemed perfect. Exactly. <laughs> I think that's the the crux to this message right mm-hmm. here, yeah. right? So what Trump was, I think, illegally recorded, by the way, because they had no basis for this recording. 
right? Right, and I think it's and a two-party state where both need to know there's a recording happening. And exactly. he it's wasn't so funny. I, I was just studying two party state today and one party state. That's so <laughs> funny to say that because California is two party and Arizona is one party. There was a reason why I did that because I wanted to keep some patriots out of trouble. Um, anyways, so so when when Trump spoke to Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, right? None were one. It shouldn't be admissible in the first place because it's a two party state. Uh, num number two. It, this was the crux. This is the reason that they were using for, for the this whole, whole case yeah, of, whole of how, how he pressured them and tampering and so on and so forth. Well, that's out the window now. That's completely gone. Yeah. So now, now if it, if it was a case with a foundation, now it's a house of cards without a foundation. Correct. Maybe. So it's uh, this is pretty exciting news, I think, for, for President Trump. This is a big deal. Well, it shouldn't have been admissible, number one, because it was edited. It wasn't the full thing. Because he released the transcript after, and it didn't yeah. match with the, what they released, the audio they released of it. Such a great point. Yeah. Such a great point. So When that's what they do. The deep state does this yeah. all the time. Yeah. So you look at that, and you say, okay, so you built your case on what now? Because there's nothing now. Because even the judge Zero. agrees... There's nothing here. No, this was the foundation of their case. Yeah. And now the foundation is gone. And without a foundation, you don't have a house. So now the golden boomerang. So who's going to be in trouble now is the, the perpetrator, right? So Fannie Willis will be the one that'll be in trouble. She'll be still. Okay, what it also does is it gives more at a higher level now. Yeah. Because yeah. it's opened up the door for it. So mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a big win in so many facets. It's unbelievable. Well, that's it. We're just looking at, you know, you look for the momentum, right? So you got to look for the small little pieces here and there. And I, I get it, guys. I get it. It is frustratingly slow. The court systems are just really slow. It's like going through molasses. Uh, but eventually we get there. And, and it seems to me that we're starting to get there. We're, looks like we are turning the corner now. Yep. I agree. Yeah. Agreed. So I saw that story, uh, I think it was yesterday, and, and I said, you know what? That's our lead story. There's, there really isn't anything bigger that's going to no. come up. And sure enough, there hasn't been anything bigger today. Uh, no, I, I agree. And yeah. they, they, you're going to have people talk about things that are bi bigger, but those are distractions when it comes to this, because this is a big deal. This is, a, this is huge. Yeah, this gives him momentum in, in the right direction, which he didn't have. If you go back uh, just six months ago, he was getting pummeled from all sides, right? And, yep. and we didn't see any way out of this. And now the whole thing's like you said, we look at all these things that are all falling apart. The wheels are falling off all of it. Um, I guess you say the truth always comes to the top. Is that how that works? Yep. You know? I, eventually, it yep. always does. Yeah. So good news. Good news. Uh, so Robert Hur, the special counsel. This reminds me of James Comey about the Clinton emails. Mm -hmm. When he basically went through and said she did this, 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 and this, and all these things are against the law. Then he goes, yeah, but nobody would take that case, so we're not going to charge it. Right. This guy's doing right. the same. Here are all the laws he broke, but, you know, he's too senile. We're not going to do anything about it. Well, this is, again, that, that's a win. We look at it as a loss, but it's a win. All these disclosures are, are a win because, right. as, as I, I talk, there's somebody I talk to all the time, and I say, when we work inside of these board of supervisors and everything else, don't don't worry about the outcome on that day. This is all about putting it in record because ultimately what we're doing is we're building a bigger case. Right. And that bigger case is what's going to take down the cabal. So those two things can go go to other, together. Right? They're not mutually exclusive. The Comey, Comey and the Hurt thing, they go they go right together actually. And that's just building the bigger case. And then this is what we're going to use to take down the cabal. And it's going to be very effective. The writing's on the wall. Let, let's put Q to the side. Let's put trust the plan to the side. Let's put all the, the patriot hoping to, hoping to the side. And let's just look at it for what it is. For, at minimum for what it is, is there's a massive case being built, right? And the deep state is absolutely freaking out and scrambling right now. Right. Right. Because they're falling because they know they're I think they're less afraid of President Trump than they are. We the people. And that's what they've been trying to hold back for so long, and they cannot hold back. We the people anymore. So they're holding back what they perceive as we the people's leader, which is President Trump. So and that's the media. why I think 
and and because the, the, the media is hiding their message and 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 you know holding up the 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 framework the the narrative for but them. there is there is there is no mainstream media anymore too in my opinion right that that's a myth if you just look at the numbers and i'm a numbers guy right you just go to the top 10 and rumble the, them combined are just quadrupling or quintupling sometimes what the what the media output is so it's just not happening and we're finding out because um I, I use my wife a lot because she actually is in touch and we're finding out that who's still stuck on the media are that pretty much 60 to 80 year old range now there's a lot of 60 to 80 year olds watching right now that are absolutely awake right yep but she she goes by what they reference all the time, mm-hmm. and they reference Fox News and CNN and MSNBC and or The View or something like. So they make these references. So she's like, okay, I get it. So she understands right now that the age range is is our our seniors, right? Which I'm close to being one that are are still stuck in that matrix. But it makes sense if you think about it because they've been indoctrinated by that medium for at least fifty years. So, of course, it would be harder for them to pull away from that. But it's shrinking unimaginably fast. So we have exponential growth in this area. And when I say we, it's we the people. So I'm very excited. And, you know, it's just another battle that we'll have to overcome. So you say, uh, you know, what has, uh, you know, the Internet done for us? Is it powerful? Is it great? I think it's fabulous. I think it's got a dark side, surely. I think everything does. Uh, But certainly it's done a lot. Because if you think about what we're doing right here, the amount of equipment that we would have needed, plus we would have to be on a network, Plus, we'd have to get permission, licensing, and everything else. Just go back 20 years. We wouldn't have been able to do this. This wasn't possible, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. Actually, you know, it's funny because uh, I started live streaming video in 2004, so literally 20 years ago. But it was a postage stamp. <laughs> And it was only like, I think it was 15 frames a second. So it was a little choppy, you know, but right, yeah, I've right. been doing it for, you know, 20 years now. We've been live streaming video, but look at it today. It's, you know, we look like uh, a news organization here. We look like a multi-million dollar uh, TV station, which it would have been, you know, 20 years ago. Right. Right. That's why I could get aware, away with wearing my uh, Borat outfit underneath. There you go. There you Nobody go. Nobody sees it. So this is Ghost Rider that he had, quote, just found all the classified stuff downstairs, end quote. When Mr. Biden said this, he was a private citizen speaking to his ghostwriter in his private rental home in Virginia. <laughs> There's nothing in that that is legal. Nothing. No, isn't it interesting? So I, I wrote it down. He said, says, um, we independently investigated this. Okay. So independently is- means outside of the FBI. Right, which right. is true. So, mm-hmm. and and in and the the misnomer that independence means that you don't have any bias. That's not what independence means. It just that, like you just nailed it, it means it's outside of the governmental structure right. mm-hmm. of of the FBI or the DOJ. Right. right. So yes, they could hire somebody independent. Okay, great. Well, the DOD hires Grumman, Lockheed to do some of their dirty work, right? The CIA contracts people to do their dirty work. Yep. So let's not let's not be under the myth that independent is truly independent because it's not. In addition to that, they may have independently investigated, they may have independently released the information, but their response was 100% biased. And True. by the way, pre, pre-calculated. Yeah. Because what it is, is called damage control. It's like, there's too much on this, right? Everybody's gonna go down if we don't admit some of this, right? How do we get away with it? Admit it, and then say that he's he's too senile to be held accountable. Yeah, admit it and then pull it away, and and like uh, like Comey did. Oh, it's Just like, like Comey. Yeah, yeah, great analogy. Yep, absolutely. So it's very very interesting. Yep, because he did exactly the same thing. He laid it all out, and then he said, "Well, no one would take this case." I'm like. Seriously, I would take it. I'm not even a lawyer, but I would take yeah, it. <laughs> exactly, it's pretty pretty simple, isn't it? Uh, literally, my gosh. Yeah, so it's interesting. All right, so time to talk about pets. Um, here's a uh, a guy who figured out how to cut his dog's toenails easily. Let's do it. 
Egg. Peanut butter on the head. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, genius. <laughs> All right, that's one way of doing it. Well, that's not what you do with your puppy. I, I see you got a different approach here. Yeah, no, I, actually, I have hair. You have so hair. <laughs> what I do is I put on a construction construction mm -hmm. helmet, and then I put super sauce. Yeah. Oh. All over my construction helmet and then cut the nails. <laughs> wow, that's Cooper. He's my ten-year-old. Uh, long story short, is uh, a great dog, but he was always very listless. Not a lot of energy, right? And we and it was always weird for us because he seemed healthy. He looks, and then, but the challenge was everybody saying, "Oh, you have a husky. Oh, how do you control him?" And so on and so forth. Like, what are you talking about? Isn't he just tearing the house apart? No, he's good. He just lays around. Wow. And then sure enough, so we ended up putting him on the the foods, Pet Club 24-7 food, right? The next thing you know, he's he's jumping up on his back two feet. He's excited. <laughs> he's prancing around, acting like he's something super special, some type of supermodel. I don't know. Much Not as thin, though. And, uh, well, I guess he doesn't have a penis, right? No, he does, but he had the surgery. Not like the supermodels that have one and pretend to be a female. Oh, no, I'm not going there. Anyways, it's, uh, guys, it is the, the most amazing thing when the results that we see with animals all over the place. And I can, if you'd like, I can one day pull up the hundreds of testimonials that I get in email of people saying that this is just absolutely incredible stuff. So I would recommend it. Um, we're looking to get a, a doctor that's been investigating um, the poisons in the pet industry on the show. So we'll see if that happens. That would be really, really cool. It would be. And, uh, you know, listless is, is uh, a symptom of uh, not having the fire in the food, right? So there's no energy in the food in the quarters. Uh, listless. Uh, this is Thumper. Some people call him Trumper. I love that. Uh, but he was the same thing. He was listless, too. And we thought he stopped eating. We thought maybe this was the end. And then we got him on the Pets 24-7, and he's like a kitten again. It's like, it's crazy. Woke me up at 6 o'clock this morning. No, no, 645, 645, but he comes in 60. I guess he was hungry. <laughs> Let me get my super sauce. Yeah. And 15, right? 15, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. That is absolutely incredible. You know, since we were running late, I thought we we're going to, I was going to bring our guest on right now, but it looks like he disappeared in the back office. So I guess we'll go to the next story. Oh, yeah. So um, just so you know, if you want to get uh, the Pets 24-7, uh, Pet Club 24-7, the link is in the description of the video. And I know some of you don't have access to that. We're going to rectify that. We have a, we're building a, a website up for that. So next couple of days, we'll have that built, make it easier to find the links. But for now, today, it's in the description. All right. So the, the second big story of the day, um, tick tock, tick tock, boom. I had to laugh at this story because there are a lot of people falling on either side of this. They don't know, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? We're trying to ban TikTok here in this country. It's, it's an interesting game. Uh, I look at it from a technical perspective. Mm -hmm. I kind of understand how these things work. And I kind of laugh because you have Congress voting on this. And there's nobody in there that's really technical. How, they don't understand okay. how this works. Are you, are you going to read the story, or is that about it? No, I'm, I got a lot to read. I got a lot. Because I happen to read this story, so I'll, I'll, I'll jump in there. Okay. Um, let's tell us our, our guest. We, we were just about ready to bring you on, but we didn't see in the back room, so we went to a new story, just so you know. So we'll bring him on um, after this story. because we're Yeah, yeah we'll be in soon. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and by the way, guys, we're excited about this guest. It's, he's going to do a weekly feature with us, and this is going to be really cool. So stand by for this gentleman. Um, but yeah, go through the story, Robert, because I do have some commentary on this, and I think you're going to nail it, most likely, from what I saw. China may soon lose the ability to poison millions of young Americans' minds with his social media app in the coming weeks if House of Representatives gets its way. So it passed the House of Representatives, now it's got to go to the Senate. Um, however, members of both political parties are raising concerns about constitutional violations, in other words, First Amendment. CNBC reported uh, the House approved a bill Wednesday that demands China tech giant ByteDance to sell off TikTok. 
The infamous media app will be effectively banned in America. Specifically, the bill gives TikTok six months to eliminate foreign adversary control, which would include ByteDance divesting its current ownership to remain available in the United States if they were to do that. Um, the measure, the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications. What's the acronym for that? P-A-F-A-C-A. Hmm. Passed by a vote of 352 to 65 and one member voting present. This included 15 Republicans. Now, Rand Paul was kind of pissed off. He said, uh, TikTok is banned in China. We're thinking, or people who want to ban it are thinking, wow, we're going to really defeat the Chinese communists by becoming Chinese authoritarians and banning it in our own country? TikTok is banned in China. So we're going to emulate the Chinese communists by banning it in our country? It makes no sense whatsoever, according to Rand Paul. Donald Trump, who previously uh, pushed the, to ban TikTok, that was when he was president, um, came out against the bill after a meeting with billionaire TikTok investor Jeff Yass, who holds a 15% stake in ByteDance, leading some to suggest that the former president had sold out. We also learned from Politico that former Trump aide Kellyanne Conway, you remember her, um, has begun lobbying for TikTok on behalf of conservative Club for Growth, of which Yass is a large financial backer, and at whose retreat Trump pra praised Yass as fantastic. So lots of chess going on here. All right. A lot to unpack in this story. A lot to unpack in this story. There is. I I'm just going to go on a couple key points. So right now, let's step in the time machine. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, two to three years ago, universally the patriot community was screaming boycott TikTok, and boycott Zoom. They're Chinese-operated. You don't want to use them. This is going to get you, get you in trouble. They're, just, they're scamming you. They're taking all your information. And I came out to the chagrin of many, and I, I said, do not boycott TikTok or Zoom. Why? Because at the time, Zoom was the only platform that was not suppressing our information. Right. Number two, at the time, TikTok versus uh, uh, Twitter at the time and, and uh, other platforms was the only one not suppressing very much ever information. Now, they have accelerated on some things, which is upsetting to me. So two years ago, this is what we're saying. I go, so do not. I said, this is a deep state um, Oper operation going on and if they're screaming so loud universally don't use tiktok don't use zoom because of china's influence and control the exactly opposite thing is you should do that because the deep state is most powerful in the united states let's call it what they like to call the united states of america that's where it's most powerful so it's very, very important for us to use our discernment and not jump on these narratives. And that's why it was so heavy. And some people started to come around after a while. But, you know, of course, I took flack, which that's lovely. I do it all the time. But the reality is not to pat myself on the back, but that one I was 100 percent correct on because now even Rand Paul, his quote, I got it here, which you said, said TikTok is banned in China. We're thinking, or people who want to ban it are thinking, wow, we're going to really defeat the Chinese communists by becoming Chinese authoritarians and banning it in our country? TikTok is banned in China. So we're going to emulate the Chinese communists by banning it in our country? Rand Paul, I can't say anything else. I think you did a great job mm -hmm. on, on showing exactly what I was, before I even read the article, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. That's communism. And then he points it out. So I'm, I'm glad we have somebody pointing it out there. And then in addition, it said, the bill gives TikTok, quote, six months to eliminate foreign adversary control, which would include bike dance diversity, its current ownership, blah, 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 to remain available in the United States. Okay, so this is optics. This is all optics. Could this be the good guys putting this out? Right? Because, again, if you're giving a six-month window just to get somebody in the United States to take over, right, who's gonna, who would buy it? Who would buy those shares? Good guys or bad guys? Right. 
That's the question. Maybe the good guys already own it. Who knows? But I think it's very, very telling. Now, it's to me, it's frustrating. And did you, I'm sorry if I missed it. Did you talk about how, you did talk about how they, how Donald Trump was in, in support of banning TikTok at one time? Yep. Very weird that Gateway Pundit, who this is from, they're taking it out of context. They even said, to, has he sold out? Right? This is very interesting. So maybe Trump was part of the narrative to get us to the point where we're going now, where we're saying, hey, we, you know, it, we need to just ban it so it can expose people. Because he does play the 5D chess, and I, under, I understand that. That part was actually I, from Zero Hedge. So I, I have half of it from, I do this oh, a lot, okay. Gateway Pundit and, and Zero Hedge, and I kind of combine, I, I take the pieces that I want from different okay. places. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I always like to tell them what our sources mm -hmm. are, so I'm yep. glad you said that. So it's what's interesting is so what was the intention of zero hedge here with this whole whole deal how president trump was pretty much lobbying against this That's well i wonder question. what the intention was yeah right mm -hmm. because it seems like one of those things that you just throw out there to see if you get something to bite so something is to pay attention to um ultimately uh this is interesting. I believe it needed to come out in public. Like this is the thought of the the Congress. I would definitely like to see the makeup of the people, the individuals who voted for it. That may tell us a lot because there's a lot of Republicans that voted for it. Right. And that could just tell us really who your deep state players are. It may become that. Uh, that being said, ultimately, it's a nothing burger because they put the six month window to have somebody with inside the country purchase it. So the question really is, then I would put my eyes on it uh, stronger because if the person or company that bought it is a deep state company, well, they have something to worry about. If they're, if they're good guys, then we're in, we're, it's, it's clear there's no issue here. Well, they played a little bit of a game here because uh, Elon Musk was saying this is a Trojan horse, right? So what he's looking at is like, okay, they banned TikTok for ostensibly, uh, you know, programming our youth. And that's what they're they're basing it on. He says, that's why we have so many gays and transgenders now that we never had before is because they're influenced by this media and this media highlights those things and, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, raises them to the top so the kids see more and more of them. Uh, the other thing we're seeing a lot of is they're saying a lot of patriots are being blocked and banned on there. Um, Lisa Richards, our, our roving reporter here for SBG News, said that uh, screw big gov and Lewis Herms were hashtags that uh, are potentially blocked. And then she came back and said, well, maybe on one account they are, but not on the, another account. So we're kind of not sure about that yet. But so there are patriots saying, hey, we are being banned there. And then you got to look at this and say, okay, it's well, banned. now, but Robert, now, right before the truth tour, not that we should take credit for us getting banned, but before the truth tour, that's where a lot of disclosures were coming out. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then as a truth tour, too, if you put truth tour, Lewis Herms or screw big gov at anything, it was it was just jacked up. But right. for we actually got a huge account on TikTok deleted because of the truth tour. I believe it was true tour number two. But so you're right. But it's that's a transition that I've seen is it was putting just about everything out. And now they're starting to attack Patriots on it over the last two years. Right. What's your thought on that? So this is being portrayed as a huge win. Right. But the truth By of the matter Congress. is, well, on both sides is a huge win, right? So, because they're both sides voted for is bipartisan. So, That's what I said in, in Congress in general. In Congress right? in general, right? So, over, overall, they're, they're portraying this as a big win. And if you look at it from a technical perspective, it's an absolute nothing burger, as you mentioned before. Because they got the Great Firewall of China. And I talk to Chinese people because we buy stuff here for the farm uh, in China. So, I have conversations with them. They know how to use VPNs. They know how to get around it. It's not right. stopping them. So let's say they ostensibly they say, okay, we're going to ban TikTok. You know, any U.S. address going to TikTok, it'll be blocked. This is a bad news for the Internet because the Internet's supposed to be a free and open platform, which means if you want the propaganda, you should be able to get your hands on it, right? I can buy a $4.99 VPN account and get access to it any way I want to. 
I just go to Canada and boom, I'm in. I go to Spain. I go to Mexico. I go, you know, we do this all the time. This is something that's very common today. And in fact, if you're not using a VPN, the question is, why not? Uh, it's a very good idea to do that. Uh, you know, we don't use it for streaming because it, it tends to slow the, the stream down. But for everything else, yeah, a VPN is a good tool. So hey, we we'll take this. a VPN sponsor. Come forward. <laughs> exactly. We There's have not very many things that Robert and I believe in. So <laughs> I mean, you know, this may we be have the technology to get around this. <laughs> and, and, you know, the, the idea that we can block something, number one, is bad because it is a slippery slope. It's like the censorship, right? Oh, first, they're just censoring porn and they're censoring drug use and this and that. But the fact that they're censoring at all, then they just add to that list because they already have the mechanism in place to do so. Right? I think you and, would say the foot in the door. Yeah, literally. And and now, you know, the censorship is way over the top. I mean, way over the top. And, and they could just keep adding to it, keep adding to it, keep adding to it. And like the frog in the boiling water, we're kind of getting used to it now. I don't know about you, but it enraged me when it first started. And I, I, made a, I made a pledge back then. I said, not one more dime to Facebook. And we we're spending a couple of thousand dollars a month with them in advertising. I told Phoebe, I said, no more money to them. No more. It's an un-American company. That's not censorship. Is not something we do in this country. That's, that's what you'd have in communist China, right? And now we're kind of getting used to it. Yeah, you know, you can't post this. You can't say that. And we're kind of playing with it. But the truth is, we don't want to live in that. We want to have free speech. We want people to be able to say what they want to say. You don't have to agree with it. And if you don't like it, you keep scrolling. Not hard. Right. Or you unfollow or you say uh, block this person or don't show me stuff like this. There are tools for that without going to censorship. So this idea is a little bit crazy when you look at it from a technical perspective. And I kind of laugh every time Congress does something on a technical level. Oh, we're going to block the, uh, the TikTok. Yeah, uh, we're going to get rid of that. How are you going to get rid of it? We need a little sparker how to make the bullets and we can get this stuff everywhere. We got the metal, we can make the barrel, we can, you know, it's just like, you can't, you can't get rid of it. And, and the technology here is the same. So let me ask you a question, Mr. Herms. Mm -hmm. If you were a social media company, what is the most valuable part of that company? Well, I believe it's the, it's the information that the people have so they can market to them. Tell me what's your thought. That's my thought. Robert, the algorithm. In it's the algorithm. The algorithm, when it works and you can look at Gab, the algorithm does not work in Gab. It's not a place you spend a lot of time on because the content shit. Right. I wish it were better, but it's not. They haven't invested in the algorithm. Mm -hmm. These companies invest tens of billions, hundreds of billion dollars to make that algorithm work. And what I mean by work means it keeps you engaged in the website. You don't go anywhere else. You keep looking at more and more and more content. So then the algorithm is individual. You train the algorithm for your individual account based on what you're looking at. Now, you say, oh, okay, let's get rid of um, TikTok. Okay, great. They take the algorithm and they sell it to Instagram. They take the algorithm, they sell it to Facebook. They sell it to whoever. Right? Is it easily transferable? Sure. What if somebody comes up with a new network and buys that algorithm from them? Could they recreate it overnight? Yeah, they could very quickly. So if you have that algorithm and they guard that with their life, that's why we never know what the algorithms are doing. And that's why they're right. changing all the time. They're always fine tuning them. Right? Because we're learning more and more how to do this. And it's getting in now with AI. It's just I can't even begin to understand it. Um, so if you look at that, that is the value of these things. But they got it now for TikTok. Now, somebody's invented it. It doesn't go away because you shut the, com the company down. Mm -hmm. It gets transferred somewhere else. So I, this I idea you're going to stop it is wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's a good take. I, I would humbly disagree, though. I, I, I believe that the hundreds of millions of people that use it are a lot more valuable than an algorithm that other companies can can create and steal. It's really hard to, it's if, for example, if you separated the algorithm and separate separated the people, which one would a company pay more for? I think they pay more for 
for the contacts, the hundred million contacts. Now that being said, you probably wouldn't have those type of contacts. If you didn't have the algorithm. If right? you didn't have the algorithm. There you go. So, <laughs> so, so chicken agree, or egg, I, which one? <laughs> I agree here. I think we just have a disagreement <laughs> on where the most value is, but yep. we're both looking from a marketing perspective, just from different angles. Right. And and that's truth. Uh, you know, the algorithm is what allows those companies to build those, those audiences because Gab doesn't build. Why? Because the algorithm doesn't work. Right. You get garbage. I think, on I you think even more them. important, it allows them to maintain. Correct. An yeah. audience. And it because keeps, them, when, keeps them on there for longer and longer. When you and longer. Get in, yeah, yeah. When you start getting inside of their head and know their behaviors, therefore, you can manipulate them and, and hold that audience a and, lot longer. And advertise more to them. And the more ads, the more views, the more ads, the more money. You see how it just kind of snowballs. So, you know, here's here's that's the system. If you've got that system, and you've got it figured out. You could sell that and. You know, this is the world we're in. We're just going to have to teach our children how to use the Internet and how to not be sucked into this stuff. And by the way, it's, if you think TikTok's bad, you should see some of these video games. hundred times worse than what you're getting on TikTok. Yeah, I don't yeah. see any legislation on those, do you? No, 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 of course not. Not a word. All right, I'm going to get off my soapbox because this is my area. <laughs> Cool. Whew. So what's what's up next? Uh, what's up next? There's a guy in a funny hat um, that we want to see here. Mr. Fountain, take yourself off mute, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this segment is called the Fountain of Truth. The Fountain of wow. Truth. <laughs> How nice. are you, Alan? Welcome, guy. How are you doing? Nice doing to well. see you both. Good to see you. You too. So, um... Thank you for the invitation to be on your show every Wednesday. Um, you're two of my most favorite people in the world. Uh, built trust and a history that is very important to me. You both make me feel um, uh, cared for and respected. So for that reason, I'm, I'm glad to hang my shingle here for, for one day a week. And uh, Lewis kind of has always allowed my uh, anything that I talked about to be authentic and natural. He's never led me in any direction, you know, uh, which which I, I like that. And and for that reason, it, it helps with my confidence and being able to share some of the stuff I share with you. Today, what I'm going to share uh, is some trending topics. Uh, I thought that I would like kind of see what's uh, trending on Twitter, et cetera, you know, a few days before I come on the show to kind of see what the consciousness is going on. But we just happened to have had the Oscars. <laughs> and I thought what I would lead into... <laughs> because it is timely, is I'm just going to give my take and instinct on some things that I'm picking up from personal experience. If we're talking about truth, these are my truth, firsthand observations over the course of my life of people that I have met and had private conversations. And where, where Lewis has, and I respect that, we think there might be gray hats, black hats, and there might be, a, I feel like there might be a Masonic turf war going on but we still have to be we the people in the end. But I do, I do think that um, from my personal experience, I read people's energy and their heart intentions, their magnetism coming from their heart. I have met people in Hollywood that I can swear before God I have never seen an evil thing in their life. They just happen to have, be talented and in an affluent career. So I thought what I would do is just give a different perspective about the Oscars right now this year than what other people are. We're in a we're in a time frame right now where people, according to the level of their awareness and knowledge, they are attributing a, what they're witnessing. Oh, that's demonic. That, that's the dark hat. Or, or it can also be from part of the movie coming from the white hats. The, uh, we had John Cena at the Oscars who comes out naked. That might not have been inappropriate. Some people say that's a Masonic uh, humiliation sketch. But it was also appropriate uh, entertainment for someone who wears a Speedo in the wrestling ring anyway. You know, he didn't really show anything. John Cena being associated with WWE, Ed McMahon. We have Trump and Ed McMahon. They were kind of partnered early on, built a relationship. You know, so... A lot of people believe that the wrestling was an alternative, possibly gray hat, white hat, um, you know, sports system, more so than being infiltrated by the, the bell worshiping uh, Kazarian mafia influence. So if we have John Cena as a representative of the WWE, he might have just 
be playing a role in this final movie phase. Um, you know, so it just might be getting people to address it and look at it for wherever their current consciousness it is. So no matter what, it uh, builds something out there. So I'm just putting that out there for, for people to discern and look at. I have a personal rela- uh, a past personal history with, with a gentleman who won an Oscar here at the, um, Acad- at the Oscar ceremony this year. Robert Downey Jr. won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor and Oppenheimer. We know Oppenheimer is a disclosure movie uh, and for the timing of it coming out, um, I would have to do some really deeper research. I know Mel Kay has done some research and some of their spin is, is that the, uh, the history is altered or whatever. But I do know that the consciousness of it coming out, his winning an Oscar right now. Um, and also they talk about Q. They made Q very internationally famous. Q Clarence came out in the movie Oppenheimer. So here we have, you know, an association with military intelligence, but, you know, um, you know, something of a high security classification that became part of the consciousness of the masses. Not people, not, not everybody might pick up it. They might miss it if they don't, if they don't get it. But what I can say is until God decides or someone's arrested, I met Robert in 1996. We both happened to wind up at a a recovery center. Everybody can remember his famous period during 1996 when he made that spell out early to play a role now. You know, what's going on right now that um, is part of the movie? Because I think anybody that's really, really bad and is not able to participate in our future, we know that girl who was in in the TV show Charmed. Uh, is it Alyssa Milano? Yeah. Haven't seen her anywhere. Right. Nowhere. Have you seen her anywhere? I haven't. No. Nope. And we know that she was playing a really dark role. You know, so I'm only putting this information out there. I can't, I'm, I, 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 I'm not God. I don't know what is true. I'm just saying that I think we need to keep a, uh, our vibrations high, our hearts open and, and, and take care of our own, where we're focusing, more so than using judging. I think a lot of people that are in our movement on the Patriot side, they're judging, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're judging different, uh, you know, they're, they're judging people. That's a lower vibration thing. That brings yeah. your vibration down. That puts you in another timeline. You, you know, the people who are constantly doing that, your intentions are good. Your intentions are not to want to harm children. Uh, they're doing the gay narrative and the uh, out of context. People should be being who, who God created them to be authentically. I think when you're your authentic self at an adult, uh, when you reach that age of majority, you're in alignment with with God's will for you. You know, and we got a huge religion thing going on here that uh, that doesn't also line up with with where, where I think we're going as a evolving ascending society. This is just some little things. I don't know if you have any questions or, or comments about what. Yeah. Well, um, I appreciate your perspective. And I, I've been well, saying for a while that not everything is what we appear it to be. Therefore, you're going to find elements of um, good that are actually evil. And you're going to find those that you perceive to be evil as good. And why is this? There's never been a real war won without infiltration and spies. That's just yeah. That's just a fact. So for us to wholeheartedly just know 100 percent who is who i think it's tough right now especially with the technology of masks and um cgi and now ai um you could even go as far as since you brought up Alyssa milano um her husband owning a cloning center is that true wow really? wow yeah so in in los angeles so it, all these things are inter interwoven and con- connected what i will say though is I've heard from separate sources several times, and I'm not saying it's true, because I have my discernment or I'm open-minded, that Robert Downey Jr. is a good guy that has infiltrated Hollywood and trying to make a difference. So we'll find out if that's it, it aligns to what you're saying about him, and you had personal experiences with him, so that will be interesting. Let me just tie into one more thing. And then what about we'll- Mel Gibson? He and Mel Gibson are like that. Oh, Exactly. And we have to look at this, too, guys. And this is where we tend to jump off the cliff if if our conspiracy theory hats are on. How do I say this? Okay, I'm going to make it really simple. 
because you flew on Jeffrey Epstein's plane doesn't mean you visited the island. Those yeah. are two completely separate things. The island had a purpose and a sole purpose, in my opinion, and yeah. that that was for them to get to get dignitaries compromised on tape doing really horrible acts to yeah. to to minors and others. Um, that's what that was. Now, I'm familiar with the tactics of of these masons and these demonic beings and what they do is they try to court these people what better way to court somebody by then flying them around on your beautiful private jet it's where the people go from there yeah. that matters president trump has been at parties with jeffrey epstein yeah. that doesn't mean anything else they were trying to court him yeah. and i believe based on um intelligence and a deputy that testified that President Trump actually was part of the takedown of Jeffrey Epstein. So we have to yeah. be very careful. This is where we have to take a deep breath and use our discernment. And let's just not always jump on the Patriot narratives because we are going to find out. We are. And a lot of this shit yeah. ain't true. Yeah. And a lot of it, a lot of it is that we never knew. And I, I'm definitely not in the know. So I'm no, I'm going to be shocked as others but I'm balanced enough to understand it's not going to affect me drastically because I don't I idolize anybody. You know, one thing I want to talk about with my Hollywood. wife, by the way, tell my wife. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. <laughs> by the way, hello wife. Um, there, there's another pattern I found here. We know the Kingsman movies, the Kingsman's movie seems to me to be reveals on many levels. I agree. We had, yeah. I have a lot of friends that are from Hollywood that are, could be perceived uh, by the public, oh, they're demonic, they're evil, they're associated. But here we have Elton John was in the Kingsman movie. A drug that they put into humans' bodies that made them get sick. They blew up Switzerland where they held the uh, um, where they held the, the chemical, you know, the bad drug. And so here we have Elton John and Princess Diana, you know. So 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 there's all of these things that are, I've seen patterns of people that are connected. That if you look at their fruits from how they gravitated to them, there might be a bigger story. You know, there might there might be more to be revealed down the road. You know. Yep. You know. Alan, I appreciate your take on this. This is an amazing segment. Thank you for coming on, I, folks. I really want you to support Alan Fountain. This is a true patriot that has been through the wars in in a, in a level that most of you could probably never ascertain it's pretty Thank tough you for recognizing that yep but that that being said alan i want people to go to your channel and support you where where's the best way that they can find alan fountain the fountain of truth fountain of truth yes so uh, um you can uh go to either my link tree or you can go to rumble and you can put my name in rumble alan fountain and you'll get about 150 podcasts that'll come up over the last three subjects over the last three system but also, if you go to my Rumble, I have my private channel, Fountain of Truth Media on Rumble, all spelled together, and follow my uh, Fountain of Truth. And uh, there's, uh, I've only uh, sponsored one product, it's because I'm using it and, and finding it, and that was, I, 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 I promote Numi, and my link is in there, fountain.numi.com, it's in my uh, articles and stuff. But I would appreciate people if they if they could help support me. I've never really done anything but donations in the past. I need to be mindful because I've done a lot of work to care for the children and, and to help our movement move forward. And I appreciate you recognizing that. Thank you. Absolutely. Alan, yeah. we appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Nice to see you both. Sure. Bye. And and folks, Robert and I do our best to read the chat. 1212 um, uh, 12 Lovejoy, if you can email me that question to screwbiggov at protonmail.com and maybe uh, articulate it a little bit more what you're looking for. I'll see. I'll do my best to answer you. Thank you. Robert, was that an amazing segment? Yeah, or what? well, Alan, Alan uh, brings a different, uh, a different taste to the show, if you will. It brings a little, little sprinkles of something uh, different on top. So fantastic. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate you. And, <laughs> and in regards to chat, uh, our friend Carol Maureen, uh, reminded us that she spent two weeks with Marina Abramovich at an ashram in India. She said she did not like me. 
I had no idea who she was until I watched the fall of the cabal. <laughs> Very interesting. There's a lot of people that have connections like that. Um, Carol brings a, a lot to the show. In fact, Carol, I did notice when I was talking about my eyeballs a couple of days ago, you're like, use the honey. I know. And you're, were you yelling at me? I'm not quite sure, but I got it. I got it. My wife even said you should listen to her. All right, Robert. What's, I know we're running late. Are we? Got folks in the chat. Do you also want to finish everything that we have and go super late, or you want us to cut it off in fifteen minutes? What would you prefer? So, what's up next? Ah, we can hit it in fifteen minutes. Oh, can we? Okay. Bye. Ah, your lovely you wife said, sent. So this. you're going to keep keep me from not talking. <laughs> That's right. We're just going to have to. You're going to have to swish or something because you know we we'll have to keep that going. Yep. Uh, U.S. airport nasal swabbing expanding to Chicago and Miami. I did not know they were even doing this, but apparently they are. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention uh, program is asking arriving international passengers to volunteer their noses uh, to get them swabbed and answer questions about their travel. The program operates at six airports, and on Tuesday the CDC said it was adding two more, Chicago O'Hare and Miami. Those locations should provide more information about respiratory infections coming out of South Africa, uh, South America, Africa, Asia, particularly CDC officials said. Now, we already have this, but we don't swab them at the southern border. We just let them in. They're from coming from all these countries, aren't they? From what yeah. I understand? Yep. All I right. don't see so the Border Patrol, uh, you know, sticking the thing up the nose. Because they're going after South America, Africa, and Asia. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. You know, on any other given day, that would be called racism. Right. Right? It certainly would be if Trump would have requested oh, this. Oh, yeah, yeah. No question. And then my second was asking myself, as I do, I go, how would I have responded? Because I fly a lot. And when I mean a lot, I mean a lot. If someone came up to me with a swab, Right. And and wanted to uh, test me. I, I mean, the first thing I would say, I would, I would calmly because I know they're just employees in most cases. So I try not to beat the hell out of them too much. I would say, please show me the law or ordinance that gives you the power to do this. Yeah. And There's they'd say, that. well, it's a, it's a mandate. I go, wait, wait, wait. A mandate is a dog whistle that is given to corporations. So the corporations follow suit. So, again, Show me the ordinance. Oh, well, but the CDC said, by the way, is what's, what they're saying. The CDC said to, I go, great. Well, the CDC has no jurisdiction here whatsoever. So why would I possibly let you stick something in my nose because the CDC? So why are you doing this? But I have to. I go, great. So come at me with that swab. That is assault which gives me the opportunity to defend myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you right now, this is not going to work out very well for you. Are you sure you want to try to swab me? And the reason why I go that direction is because I really would want the sheriff to show up. And then I would have to go through this whole thing with the sheriff. And I would hope that they would try to do something because therefore then I would take this into a court, which we would lose until it goes through the appeals process. But this type of stuff has to be put out in public so people learn in a, in a public platform of mandates mean shit. They, it's a corpocracy. They have, they have nothing. You can't use a mandate. Right. The CDC has zero jurisdiction. The, the WHO tried this game, and we were warning them, what, Robert, seven months ago, don't even listen to it. It doesn't matter. You can't give away our constitutional rights like that. The reason why our constitutional rights has disappeared, folks, look in a freaking mirror. It's because you accepted it. I was guilty, so I'm not scolding you. I was guilty. I accepted it. We gave our constitutional rights back. They did not take them. They asked for them. They manipulated us to try to get them back, and we willingly said, here you go. Yep. So, again, we take the accountability, we grab our sovereignty in ourselves, and we move forward. Yeah. And, and, you know, you saw that happen in 2020 when they shut down everything and everyone stayed home. 
I mean, I was driving here in California during that time, and there was nobody on the road. I mean, it was just like deserted. Uh, the towns were quiet. Everything was quiet. Uh, and, and we accepted that. If enough of us would have said, no way, we would have gotten nowhere with it, right? And they, they enrolled the corporations. They enrolled the stores uh, into that game, and, and the stores were enforcing those mandates that were not laws, and, you know, I did my best to ignore them as much as I possibly could. But you end up getting in a scuffle with, you know, the low-level employee, the person who's just trying to make enough to pay rent, you know. That's and, right. And it's like, it's no fun to do that, but you got to yeah. do it. You well, got to stand up. Yeah. They still need to get the education at the yeah, same time. They do. Because they, they have to understand. And, and it's like putting them on notice. Like, okay, I'm assuming, it's, it's, it's like I'm saying, I'm assuming you don't know. Let me educate you. Now that you know you're not operating in ignorance anymore, you have a will for disregard for our sovereign sovereignty. Right. Now that becomes a choice of theirs because they have the information. But look at what they're doing, though. The CDC is doing this at the airports for people who are the most unsuspecting people coming into this country from overseas. Right. They don't know what the rules are here. They land. Oh, you have to swab. OK. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, although they quote they quote say it's voluntary. What I'm seeing here is they're trying to begin to build the narrative that, look, there's more and more. Uh, now you heard today the measles is popping up all over the place from these 100%. illegals, right? Yeah. And 100%. they're starting to build that narrative now. And, oh, we've got a swab. Look, look, we're protecting. Uh, we don't want the next outbreak. You know what happened the last time? It wasn't any fun. Uh, you know, and they need the numbers. So what are they going to do? I mean, if you swab enough people, the numbers are going to be there. Well, plus, if they're using a, if they're using a PCR test, it's already false. It's already fifth. Let's freak out. I was one and a half people out of ten. <laughs> yeah. Lock it all. Lock it all down. Yep. Right. That's the way they're going to build it. And then, then when you say, "Well, out of sixty people, right, we got X amount of false positives." Oh no, they're not going to tell you that. Because <laughs> that doesn't build their false narrative. We see that this in is sports. so fun, Robert. I love this stuff because this, when we have the knowledge, we are we are destroying their narrative immediately. It's yep. just so fun. Keep up the good work, Deep State. We have I, you a know we see this happen in sports all the time. I watch hockey, right? And and you see, it's like, oh, this guy just got created a new record. He's got the most goals on a Sunday. <laughs> what the hell record is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, but they do this all the time. Every time you watch a game, it's like, oh, that's a new record. Who cares? That's, it means nothing. You know? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Nobody has ever skated so fast under a full moon with that's, a puck on this. <laughs> that's <laughs> okay. right. After eating two pounds of ice cream. I don't know. Right. You know? Like, never happened before. <laughs> You are watching history, folks. <laughs> but that's what they're doing in the sports world, and that's what they're doing uh, with the CDC, and that's what they're, they're playing with the numbers and playing with the numbers in an attempt to create the support the narrative that they'd like to get out there. So I look at this stuff and I go, Phew, yeah, who cares, right? <sighs> Time for some refreshment here. Come on, you know? What in the world is that? Oh, I feel so much better. Guys, you got to join us. You got to do this. You got to get a got to get a bottle of this stuff just to give it a shot. Uh, if you haven't I'll, done it, you got to go try because it is so refreshing to do. I'll join you. New me skin. My wife like, like, looks at me as eye candy for everybody else. So wrong. <laughs> it's trust me. So she has me spray this all the time. Uh, it, it is a glutathione product, a glutathione spray. The glutathione is a nanoparticle um, glutathione. They nano sized it, made it really small, so it goes right into the cells. And uh, you can spray it in any part of your body, by the way. Now, we're just doing it on our faces because we're here. There's parts of our body we probably don't want to show on camera, uh, but that's where we're using it. We're using it on our face because that's the most visible. Uh, and you can see uh, a lot of people are saying, hey, you look a lot light, better, younger. It tightens the skin and, and gets gets rid of a lot of the wrinkles, makes them less prominent, and certainly lightens the tone of the skin, too. So what it's doing, it's not, it's not a whitening agent. It's not changing the, your, uh, your pigment in your skin. What it's doing, it's removing oxidative stress. Right. So glutathione reverses oxidative stress. That's what that's what glutathione does for you and tightens the skin, lightens the skin. And uh, like I said, there are a lot of women who are saying, hey, I don't need as much makeup or in many cases, no makeup at all. And they can go along with it. So this is the spray that you spray externally. And then we have the Nutra Swish. Would you take this internally? Two capfuls under the tongue, swish it around a couple of times a day for about a minute or so. Then you swallow the rest. 
And this is a glutathione that goes right into the bloodstream and goes right to work. Your liver needs it. That's the fuel your liver needs to deal with oxidative stress, which we're exposed to all day, every day. That's why we're aging. Uh, and if you can defeat some of that, because as you get older, you, you actually create less glutathione in your system. But if you had no glutathione, you wouldn't be alive. That's how important this stuff is. And then we have the Numi Hers. This is for the ladies. Ladies, if you've tried this, you know how well it works. Helps with all the menopausal symptoms. It helps with all that time of the month symptoms, the mood swings, the hot flashes, all the rest of that kind of thing. And also helps increase libido. So your, your, your gentleman uh, will appreciate that. And uh, you can find out more about these products. The link is in the description of whichever channel you're watching this on. And uh, we appreciate you, uh, you know, if you do decide to purchase or give this a shot, we appreciate it because you support our program. And we, so we appreciate Numi uh, for giving us the opportunity uh, to present their products on a show that some people might consider to be a little controversial. Although it's dun, not. Dun, dun. <laughs> Uh, all right. We talked about Tyson Foods the other day. Did you know that? We talked about them? Yeah. We okay. Did. So here's a story that popped up today, and I thought this was interesting, kind of a, a follow-up, but it has a different spin to it. Remember we said the other day, Tyson Foods, uh, the president said, hey, if I can get 42,000 migrants, I'd hire them in a heartbeat. Now you have a story saying Tyson Foods announces closure of a major pork packing plant in Perry, Iowa leaving 1,200 workers jobless. The town of Perry, Iowa, was dealt a severe blow as Tyson Foods, one of the world's leading meat producers, declared the closure of its major pork packing plant in the area, resulting in 1,276 employees facing unemployment. Not necessarily true. They'll hire some back. Uh, they have other plants in the area. The announcement follows the Arkansas, Arkansas, Arkansas or Arkansas. How do you pronounce that? I grew up in Canada. Help me out here. Sorry, I had it muted. Arkansas. Arkansas. Okay. Arkansas-based company's closure of two chicken plants last year, uh, last year job reductions. Tyson's Food has earlier indicated that four additional plants would close by mid-fiscal 24 with related costs estimated between 300 to 400 million. This is according to USA Today. On Monday, Tyson broke the news that it would be closing the Perry, Iowa pork plant. Um, last May, Tyson closed two facilities in Virginia and Arkansas um, that employed more than 1,600 people. The month prior in April, it, it said it had planned to eliminate about 10% of the corporate jobs and 15% of corporate leadership. During 2023's earnings call, Tyson president uh, Donnie King announced the plants in uh, North Little Rock, Arkansas, uh, Cordon, Indiana, and Dexter and Knoll, Missouri, were expected to cease operations within the first half of fiscal 24. At the time, the spokesman for Tyson declined to say how many jobs will be eliminated due to closures. Now, what they did not say... I'm a coach, right? I always listen to what isn't said, right? I listen for the words between the sentences. And what they didn't say is, why are they closing the plants? So my little yeah. conspiracy brain went and said, okay, if they're going to close the plants, are they getting rid of the American workers to replace them with the lower cost migrant workers? Well, the question <clears throat> is... That, uh, would they close the plant to do that? Because historically, when this is done, they do an amalgamation. So they they slowly start bringing in the migrant workers, 10%, 20%, 50%. And then, then they completely push out everybody else and they just do it, do it right. like that. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know why they would close their plant and th that. I kind of go to the other conspiracy route. Uh, this seems like it could be a good guy operation to start taking it to Tyson, who... We know has been, in my opinion, has been poisoning us. Garbage and food. I think, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. I think we can put the nail in the coffin as we spoke about when we talked about this before. Is this is what a what an opportunity to boycott now? Boycott everything Tyson, and then then they're going to go from from losing uh, all this money to shutting the doors. Yep. And I think that that should be our goal here. We we can no longer put up with being poisoned by these companies. And we, this is why I always say we, the people are accountable because we have put up with it. We know it now. So now we can just absolutely say, no, we're not going to take it anymore. And we're going to expose all the companies that are still poisoning us. Right. 
and it, it's a lot. I've talked to people in, in the UK all the time and in, sometimes in Central America and rarely in South America. And the discussions I always have, my wife brings up is, how about your food? <laughs> and our food is so poisoned in the United yep. States in comparison. It will blow you away. So we talked to somebody that actually lives in Tijuana. See, honey, I said it right. She always gets on me because I don't say it properly. So we actually <laughs> talked to somebody there. And there is a difference just crossing the border. Now, to be honest, it's not as significant when you go deeper into Mexico. It's much better. And the right. lower you get, the better and better it gets, which is very interesting. But there's a significant difference between the food here and just crossing the border. So, guys, we need to wake up and understand this is not an accidental poisoning. This is an intentional poisoning. There will be some of you out there, my son included, that says, well, it's just finances, whatever. No, it's not. I disagree with that. It is an intentional poison because they need to dumb down society. Because when we lose our discernment and our res resonance, they, being the baddies, win everything. Yep. And you can see there's multiple layers here, right? And and the fact that they did not give you a reason, they didn't say, hey, sales are down, because uh, that would be the normal reason. Sales are down, mm -hmm. so we're going to close the plant. They didn't say that. They skirted no. it completely. Didn't and this say, is a massive no deal, given. too. This is a massive closure yeah. when you're talking over a thousand employees. Twelve hundred employees. Is, that's a big plus. This is, plus, there's four other plants that are going to close this year. Right. So how they have that planned? How they know we're not going to eat chicken this year? Is that what's happening? People are not eating chicken anymore. Is that what's going well, on? But it will be the chicken industry's uh, excuse to raise our prices. Yeah, exactly. They will do. <laughs> but the good news, folks, <clears throat> is maybe you're going to be paying more for a chicken breast that was this big, which is fake, by the way. And you'll be paying for a chicken breast that's this big, but you'll be paying more for it. Ultimately, I'll go for the smaller, l less hormone-filled, <laughs> radiation, um, what is it, yeah, piece of meat, all the chickens. Yep. right? Then I will for this bloated piece of crap that we've been eating for years and years yep. and years. I was in Costco uh, on the weekend. And I was kind of just meandering. I don't never, never get a chance to do that. But I just wanted to meander through the store. And one thing I noticed, I noticed everybody I saw was overweight. Everybody. And it's not because they're gluttons. It's not because they're overeating. It's the food is poison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're all toxic. We've got so much toxicity in us. And, and I'd put on a lot more weight than I would normally put on just in the last uh, two or three years. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. I'm not eating anymore. I'm not eating different. But the food, you know, even though I'm eating "quote unquote" organic all the time, uh, still, you know, it's it's still poisoned. Yeah, so it's interesting. Agreed, hundred percent. All right, so uh, now we'll talk about that social media post that was going all around and uh, not accurate. Dun, dun, dun. So this was being pushed by all the. Uh, uh, oh, I'm going to say all a good number of people. Oh, in the thank truth God, it's not mine. <laughs> Woo! Close call. So the Federal Election <laughs> Commission is stating that Black Rifle Coffee Company is giving money to Act Blue. Now, Black Rifle Coffee Company is veteran-owned. They're patriots. They give money to veterans for the homelessness and this and that yeah. and the other thing. And, and they're conservative, people have been too. Hosting, yeah, they're conservative, and they've been posting this all over. Boycott them, boycott them, boycott them, boycott them. They're doing something horrible here. This is ridiculous. I don't understand why the name is very similar to the real name. So this is their response. Black Rifle Co. is in no way affiliated with Black Rifle Coffee Company. I feel like we've, dress we've addressed this a few times daily. We literally got kicked <laughs> off f Facebook in August 2020 for saying Rittenhouse acted in self-defense. That is all. They're yeah. trying to defend themselves. So it w didn't take me long. It took literally like five minutes for me to debunk that and go to their website and find out, yeah, they are uh, Patriot-owned and are veteran-owned, I should say. And uh, they donate. This is $2.4 million they've donated uh, to homeless veterans. So you got to be careful, guys. Well, just because it comes across and it's one of our Patriots sharing it, sometimes that's not what's really going on. Yeah, it's tough, guys, though. We, under <laughs> we understand you can't dig into everything. Right. That comes out there. So the key is to find the trusted sources, which we even make mistakes. I consider our, us a trusted source, and we make mistakes. But at least you know that we'll do our due diligence right. and try to vet these things ahead of time. So make sure you you look at sources that are, are willing to do the due diligence for you, because we know you don't have the time today to do it. Right. Exactly. 
Uh, so uh, the CDC logo, kind of weird logo with lines behind it and stuff. Well, it finally makes sense now. Yep. Clear as a bell, isn't Clear it? Clear as a bell. Now you know what they're talking about. <laughs> uh, the whistleblower that came out suicided himself this week because he was telling people all the corners at the Boeing cuts and yada, yada, yada. And there's some more undercover video that's popped out from uh, employees saying they wouldn't fly on a Boeing plane. They make them. Yeah. And interesting enough, too, is Boeing stock is tanking. Yeah. Right now. And that's that's the, that's a, that's an interesting indicator. Um, so I I would think that the terrorists would fly on Boeing because they would be safer than a whistleblower. <laughs> it would be safer than a whistleblower, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But if you're a whistleblower, don't be flying Boeing. That's so sure. could this be uh, taking down of the bad guys? Could it be, you know, because you're seeing a lot of problems with uh, these Boeing aircraft. There's one that took off the other day and fuel was pouring out of the back of the thing as it was taking off. I'm like, that's not normal. That's not supposed to happen. No. Nope. You know? Another one lost hydraulic fluid on the on the landing gear upon takeoff. There's just a lot of weird things, and, and uh, you know, so you, you got to wonder what's behind it all of a sudden, because now you have these rash. Is it just we're paying attention to it? Is that what's going on? Um, I think it's both. Yeah. You know what I mean? When it, when it comes to the, the, to the forefront, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, remember the, the, the Boeing um, 300s. Remember those? The mm-hmm. Boeing 300s, where the um, autopilot right upon takeoff would take over, and flip the jet and throw them into the ground. That barely, you know, you had a crash after crash after crash. That's a 380, I think that was, yeah. Uh, was it? But still, it's a Boeing, right? Right, it's a Boeing, yeah. But it, I think it was the, uh, I thought it was like a 757-300, but whatever it was. Okay, yeah, um, maybe, maybe. It was, it was a three-something, so it's, it's, that's semantics. But regardless, that was happening with Boeing, right? Yep. So... And why was that? And why did it take an independent, by the way, this is the news that didn't come out. It took an independent person to f- figure out the problem. And they they quickly did so. Yep. Interesting. Maybe they just don't give a damn about the people inside of their plane. It's 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 an interesting time that we're living in. And, and uh, you know, you and I have been positing that we will not recognize the landscape when this is all said and done. So many of the companies we've trusted and, and loved over the years yeah. are going to turn out to be the bad guys. Starbucks is another one that's going down yeah. the tubes pretty quickly. Stores closing everywhere. McDonald's, apparently, most, a lot most of stores of are closing. Yeah, a lot of them are most going. Of, most of the, what the companies that we trusted are going that direction. Yep. And by the way... Master Baggy, I think, corroborates. He said 380. 380. Okay. <sighs> That's a number that stuck in my head, but I don't know if it's right or not. Okay. Um, we have... Uh, actually, you know what? We'll cover that story tomorrow because it's going to take a little bit more time and we're already way over our thing. All right. Uh, fishing. You like fishing? I like fishing. I love fishing. I love fishing. Well, you never fish robbers, no pole, no string. How did, how did she do that, Lewis? Explain. Well, you in, you indicated that <clears throat> I've never done that before, but it's uh, it's called hand fishing. Oh. And um, I think there's another name for it also, but I have hand fished. Really? So, yeah, several times when I was younger. I never hand fished for anything large like that, right? And I... Uh, in the way they do this is different than than we we did is we would we would distract the fish on one one side right with our with our hand and they would look at it but they wouldn't go and then we would grab it with the back from the from the back and sometimes we grabbed unfortunately like a bluegill and the spikes would pretty much go go yeah. through your hands but if you notice she had a glove on too yeah. so what they do is hand fishing there's another name for it also uh with the catfish but what they do is i believe they get their their hand out there i think it's maybe called noodling or something and they do this with their finger right and then the the catfish opens his mouth and they shove it shove their hand in there and they get it from the back side if you notice she put her hand through the gills yeah. right mm-hmm. yeah i've never done it i've heard about it and it just sounds like a lot of fun for me but i believe um you have to be willing to eat it or feed it to your family right and 
I don't. I'm not a fan of catfish. <laughs> yeah. Well, that water was so muddy, too. I'm not even sure how she saw underwater. She didn't have a mask on or anything. It's like, okay. Yeah. Just have to feel it. May, maybe they just grab her whole arm and she goes, okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> I like I like to see it was a young girl doing it, though. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, guys, remember to like, follow, and share this uh, program if you enjoyed it. I know many of you have. Uh, just make sure that you are still following the channels because we get reports every day now that people have been unfollowed for some reason. We don't know why. Um, it's one of those rumble mysteries that happen, and we don't know why it happens. So double check. Okay. Please double check. Please but double check. Before we leave, let's uh, announce tomorrow's show, which is epic. Do you have an image? I don't have an image. Oh, we don't have an image. Let I don't me have see. an image. Here, I'll Do we have an epic I'll, image? Yeah, I'll put up an image really quick. Okay. For y'all. Um, y'all. Very, exci y'all. Very excited about tomorrow's show. That's tomorrow's show. So it's exposing... And leaving Big Pharma and the Matrix. So exposing Big Pharma and leaving the Matrix, which is an epic show. So this is with our good friend, which we haven't seen in a while, Lance Shuttler, which is just an amazing, amazing person and a good friend of ours, uh, my wife and I for sure, Dr. Layla Ali, who is absolutely brilliant, right? And she she has a program that's called Deprescribing, and it's free. So we're not trying to sell you anything with Dr. Layla Ali. She's, it's free, and you'll be able to go on her Zoom calls. I believe she has them maybe weekly or biweekly. I'm going to be promoting it just because I think it's such a phenomenal program where people get on there and they can learn how to get out of the big pharma system because I know there's some patriots here that still you're on meds, and I get it. But we want to see if we can get you away from that and, and help get you healthy. So I really support Dr. Layla's work. We love Lance and his nutrition company. It's just phenomenal. So we have special for everybody that's there, and I'm not talking a special to purchase something, but a special where you can actually end up getting some of Lance's product for free also. So cool, cool stuff, guys. You got to be there tomorrow. And thank you for being here today. Of course. Yeah. Thank you very much. We and love thank it. you, Robert, for being here today. We love it. Well, thank you for being a good co-host and, and bringing the heat today. I appreciate that. Uh, you brought a lot of, lot of texture to some of these stories. And, and it's kind of cool to see that you have a, a perspective on things that sometimes I don't have, which is really nice to see it turn the brick a little bit more and see what's on the other side of it. Yeah, you mean the weirdo perspective? Oh, I definitely have that. Oh, you've got a, you've got a, a broader <laughs> perspective. Sometimes I can be a little focused on the uh well you're you're just a little more analytical than i so you know it's a strength and weaknesses that's why we work w well together mm -hmm. yep yeah because I, I had no idea about the algorithms let me tell you yeah uh yeah that's a that's that's a show all to itself yeah, <laughs> talk no, about those things and how they work Woo. Uh, that was brilliant yeah hey folks make sure you hang on for the song afterwards we have a mul multi songs actually and it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece that Lisa put together for us to close out all our shows. So, Robert, 